Good morning, everyone. I'm Jeremy Pickens with Alabama Extension, and I'm here with uh, Russell Wood with the Alabama Landscape and Nursery Association. And uh, this is part of a webinar series the association has been doing. We are the third Thursday of every month, and today we're featuring Dr. Tanzil Rahman. He's an assistant professor, and he's got a really neat job. He's kind of new to Auburn. He's split uh, equally between the uh, biosystems engineering department, which is uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like agriculture engineering and, he's, and, and horticulture. And his uh, research focuses on uh, automation, labor savings in specialty crops and especially uh, the nursery and greenhouse industry. And today he's going to talk about current research in horticulture technology. Thank you, Jeremy, for introducing me. Let me share my screen first. You guys can see my screen. I I cannot hear you, Jeremy. I think you're mute. You're coming through clear. I can okay, see. excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for introduction. Um, I think uh, that was really great introduction. Uh, I just wanted to, before going over um, the details, I just want to mention that I've been one year into the program. Um, uh, most of my research focuses towards uh, basically nursery industry, uh, though I work with some of the fruits and vegetable production, uh, but biggest focus is nursery industry. Uh, and today's my talk is about current research in horticulture technology. Um, so we started this smart horticulture research program at Auburn University, like I mentioned a year ago, um, with the aim of developing technology or adopting a technology or evaluating different technologies uh, for specialty crop productions in general, but specifically for our ornamental nursery uh, or landscape um, specific. Um, over the year, I've, I have done quite a few projects. Um, I would say at least we, we begin few projects. And today is just a snapshot of those projects I would like to mention. The very first project is, like Jeremy mentioned, that we have labor issues uh, pretty much affecting each and every industry and specifically affecting our ornamental industry. The, the labor cost is pretty high. Uh, it's very hard to find skilled labor who can do the job right. But on top of that, there are ergonomics factor, um, the health issues, the long working hours, the repetitive job. Uh, the probability of making errors uh, while doing certain repetitive jobs. Uh, so I was visiting one of the nurseries last year, actually a few of them, and I and Jeremy and Russell actually walked through and we figured out what are the few bottlenecks where the labor charges or labor involvement is huge. Um, and that can immediately affect some of the nurseries. And one of the biggest problem that turned out to be is, is inventory, keeping the record of uh, how many plants you got in, into the field and how many you have lost uh, to different stresses uh, across different time, uh, production time. So keeping the record and meeting the sales demand is, is, is challenging and um, people have been hiring crews basically uh, walking across the fields, taking the mailing or counting the plants, basically how many plants they got in certain bags. Uh, you can see that it's it's a labor intensive, time consuming. You, you need to pay labor, a skilled labor for just counting the plants. And the uh, chances of making error are pretty high. You can count few extra plants, you can count few under plants, but imagine counting those plants over a certain number of acres, like 20 acres, that error piles up. Uh, <clears throat> so we wanted to, so we wanted to have some sort of uh, automated system that can do inventory, um, basically counting counting the ornamental plants. Uh, this is one of the earliest projects that we started to talk about last year, and and we started to probably working on it early this year. Um, this is one of the robots we have been uh, developing in terms of hardware and uh, software also uh, that we hope can help you to do automated 
inventory in ornamental nurseries. Right now, you can see we have been testing it in some of the pine uh, industry because this is one of the collaborative project with one of the uh, guy working in, in um, forestry nursery. But uh, it's it's the same idea. We have been just testing it in in uh, pine seedlings, but it's it's very natural transition towards our ornamental uh, nurseries. We have been developing hardware over this year, um, and we plan to do some data collection probably by the end of this year. Uh, so what this, this robot uh, uh, is planned, we, what we plan to do is it's uh, basically a modular system which have a fixed, uh, basically track worth, but variable, um, actually variable track worth uh, we have so you can cover different nursery beds. Uh, the plan is to walk it, walk it over the nursery beds and start to collect the data. Uh, and that is specifically data I'm talking about is, is images. So you can see we have few cameras over here. Let me, <clears throat> so we have few, few cameras over here. Um, uh, basically you can see they, these are taking images and those images have been fed to this computer over here, which is keeping record of how many plants it sees in certain image. Um, once that system is developed, uh, it can, you just have to operate it over your nursery beds and it, it can count uh, automatically for you how many plants it sees in certain images. Now, uh, that is one component counting. We What we wanted to do and add on um, is to make sure that our, those plants we are counting are also ready to go or also doing good job in terms of the uh, uh, overall health and architecture. So in addition to counting, we also wanted to see how many of those plants are uh, ready to go and, and, and for sale, their quality parameter essentially. Uh, for example, this is, this is one of the image you can see that if we, if we go over this bag, we can count multiple plants, but some of the plants are, especially with the red dots, are, are missing. They have been lost to certain stresses, uh, or they have been, uh, there are certain plants which are not up to the mark. Um, so this, this system or this technology can help you not only count, but can also make, make sure that you have a good quality plants. Uh, what we kind of see in future is that uh, if, you have, if you have been using this system over time, you can also generate some metadata, uh, which is basically can provide you which sections uh, of your nurseries are not really doing a good job. And you can also uh, identify uh, through images, or let's say you have a repetitive pattern across different years that uh, your certain bed uh, with certain plants is not doing a good job. So your labor might be missing uh, some of the components when they are applying fertilizer or the herbicides or some other things or there might be some watering issue. So this system can provide you that information too if you have, uh, over time, you have been using this system. Uh, this is some few uh, shots uh, for testing uh, this whole system. Uh, we plan to collect some of the data for ornamental nurseries uh, later this fall, like I mentioned. So far, we have been testing the hardware, uh, some of the components. You can see on the image on the left is that it's a joystick style uh, navigation system, so you can walk behind. Uh, but there is another uh, system we, we are working on is, is to automate uh, the navigation component. Eventually, the plan is once the whole system is developed and the navigation component is incorporated, you don't have to walk uh, behind this robot. Uh, right now, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, by the end of this project, we, we hope that uh, the system will be automated and you don't have to walk behind. You don't need to hire a person just to walk behind. So it can automatically go across the different beds and count the plants for you. These are few few actually shots, uh, video of, of the system working actually. Yep. Let me mute that. So this right now we have incorporated some navigation part, but it's not fully, uh, fully developed. It's still work in progress. Uh, 
this is one of the project we have been been working on uh, lately. Another project uh, along the similar lines is for uh, tree or the bushes or any industry uh, folks who, who work in, in uh, growing tree nurseries. Uh, this is with the drones. So what we did, it, this picture I, I took actually is from uh, blueberries, uh, but the idea is similar and you can take this idea uh, to your tree uh, nurseries. Uh, idea is to, if you can fly uh, a drone, which is, uh, a regular, your ordinary drone, not very expensive ones. Um, you can buy from any box stores. Uh, if you can fly that and you can upload the data to uh, to one of our website, this is this is not, website is not fully developed, let me uh, tell you beforehand, but this is still work in progress. Eventually we plan to have a website. You can upload the images to our website. And once we have those images, we will do all the AI component uh, on our servers uh, and we will give you a count uh, how many plants we see in this image. Like over here, you can see that we have probably more than uh, 10,000 plants in this whole image field. But in addition to that, we also can give you some of the parameters uh, on the quality uh, the diameter of each uh, of those bushes. Uh, this is still, like I mentioned, work in progress, but the idea is same. We can count trees and we can also evaluate the quality for some of your the tree, uh, tree nurseries. Uh, we, we, the other project we do is drones for disease pest and weed scouting. Um, uh, this, this project has not been officially initiated, but we are uh, we're hoping to initiate this uh, by the end of the this year. Uh, we all know that the disease uh, pest and weed scouting is pretty time and labor intensive. Uh, and if you miss a spot, it's there is a probability that it, you can get a very big hot spot in your uh, nursery production areas, and you will lose the yield, and you will lost uh, the aesthetics of the plants too. Um, so we, we plan to use this disease, uh, drones actually for disease pest and weed scouting. Uh, there have been very initial work done in, in some of the uh, some of the plants. Uh, the results I'm showing is not essentially for the for the nursery ornamental nurseries uh, because this is a, a project shared with fruit and vegetable. So some of those results are coming actually from food, food and vegetable production. Uh, but we want what we want you to do. Our biggest disease we are looking at the moment is is downy mildew in roses, but that does not mean that uh, we can not go to other diseases. Uh, this is, like I mentioned, very recent project. Uh, we we plan to do some data collection this year, uh, but downy mildew is what we are planning to work with initially. But it can grow to other diseases. Uh, these are some of the shots actually from uh, downy mildew infection in some of the um, some of the leaves in, in fruits and vegetables. Uh, pest scouting, uh, I think red-headed flea beetle is our first target. We uh, we plan to do develop some sort of uh, AI tools for you. Uh, again, my idea is if we can have a website where you growers can upload your pictures. Uh, from the drones, uh, or you, we can also have some service. Uh, this is some something we are probably thinking about. But red-headed flea beetle is is our top target if we can detect it and identify it early on, so you don't have a hot spot, or you don't um, have a big uh, uh, intensification. So this is one of the work we we are planning, um, and uh, it's actually ongoing in. Uh, some similar project is actually silver leaf white flies in, in uh, vegetables, but it's a similar idea. We plan to take it into the ornamental nurseries. This is uh, one of the uh, smart sprayer. We, um, when I was part of another um, Canadian university back in Canada um, for my master's program, this is a smart sprayer, which is essentially what it is doing is taking a look at the weeds uh, identifying each weed and just only spraying at that area. So it's not a blanket application, um, but we what we plan to do is, is to utilize similar idea uh, and spray only the hot spots uh, 
whether it could be weeds, it could be uh, any pest, or it could be any disease. So it could be fungicide, herbicide, and insecticide. Um, so this is uh, what we plan to do for ornamental nurseries. Uh, this is probably future project, uh, uh, but just providing you some future insights what we can do here at Auburn. Uh, similarly, uh, if you're not interested in, in, in ground vehicles, if you do not want to use a ground vehicle for uh, basically spraying, we can also take something similar technology uh, and put it on a spraying drone and can help you to do the spot spraying, uh, where the key is to identify the specific locations where the hotspot for insect, weed, or pest is. And then um, uh, you can utilize the drone for spraying. Uh, the efficacy component of that spray drone is something a work in progress uh, with another faculty. So I, I cannot be 100% sure about that spraying efficacy uh, with the drones. Uh, so, but this is something we, we are pursuing. And we will see, we will, like I said earlier, we are evaluating some technologies and we will let our industry partners know that which of these technologies are suitable for, for our industry. And with that, I would like to end. And thank you very much for inviting me to speak for this, this beautiful talk. Thank you, Tanzil. Does anybody have any questions? Not really any questions. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it uh, it looks like a wide variety of applications. You know, um, of course, we would probably be more interested in the the drone applications with our setup. You know, Jeremy, we like to, you know, we wouldn't be going across the plants. You know, except you know maybe our overhead areas. But anyway, yeah, it's got me it's got me thinking. You know, uh, especially I like being able to do just use a commercial drone. You know, and then the soft, you know, being able to, you know, I guess, upload the data to your software. That's real attractive. So. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tanzil Bryan has a uh, uh, tree nursery, uh -huh. containerized trees, and uh, okay. yeah, he might let us be a, uh, he might be a guinea pig for us one day. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to fly at some of the uh, tree nurseries and see how does that inventory project goes or some of our spraying applications does look like yeah you know it'd be good like i'm thinking um we get breakouts of uh especially in our magnolias of scale so that would be good you know to catch it early you, you know so I, I could see that being one you know really good tool there yeah that would be a good application tanzil um Let's, if we're talking about the the uh, robot with the uh, inventory, I guess. And so, once you get a working model, um, I guess, like, how long do you anticipate, um, or what's kind of an average for something like that to become commercialized? I know that's it's a tough question, but uh, you got kind of a ballpark, you know. If if it uh, if you get you a good working model you know, how long, you know, maybe before a company picks it up or several or? I, uh, that's a very good question. And I, I don't have any straightforward answer to that uh, because there are few folks involved in that. You know, the university commercialization office would be uh, the biggest one. Uh, uh, and I don't have any idea about their timeline in terms of right. um, make it work and, and uh, a relatively working model available. I anticipate it's from um, two, two to three years down the road, but having commercialization, one or two companies picked up, uh, I'm pretty sure um, they, there would be some lag from commercialization office. Uh, mm -hmm. Really how much is, is I cannot say it's, it's uh, probably Auburn University commercialization office would be the better uh, to respond Personally. to that, but, but I, I I see that I, I've been working with them on, on some of these uh, components and probably have to reduce that time. I think another probably thing is that once we have a commercialization strategy laid out with the commercialization office, they they really wanted to say, see one or two companies being very interested in some of their product and, and let's say in this inventory robot uh, being bought out and I think that's sometime 
also take up some time uh, finding a good collaborator or partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know that would be kind of hard to diff uh, difficult to answer, but uh, two to three years to have a working model is pretty fast. Yeah. Um, the uh, so how how fast do you anticipate? Let's say you had a hundred foot bed at a nursery. Um, how fast? do you think it would take to travel over that hundred foot bed? To, well, uh, what we are thinking at the moment is operating at half a mile per hour, uh, kind of a speed, but there has been really not much testing we have done on the speed component. Uh, the We tested the robot itself can go up to uh, five miles per hour wow. uh, without without being having any issues but then it the, the bottleneck would probably how to analyze all those images at such a high speed uh, what i think is probably we are talking about how uh, half a mile per hour is is our rough ballpark that might be a good starting point mm -hmm. but there will be we will be doing some more evaluations along the speed uh, component for sure right that's cool you, you know something that i see Another benefit of, of that outside of inventory because you're doing plant quality as well is, you know, uh, having data, you know, on the same crop year after year, you can kind of have some benchmarks. If I was growing, I would know, oh, I'm I'm uh, two weeks behind where I was last year on this. And uh, so I see that being pretty valuable. And that platform, uh, once it gets working outside of uh, the image processing component of it, uh, for inventory, would it be possible with something like that to to have a like a spot sprayer type d device, that kind of like the drone, but on a, a ground application with something like that? It does, but uh, the playload is something we are uh, not uh, sure, especially uh, on the motor sides of of the wheel mm -hmm. because it got like hub motors. So we right. might we need to beef that up a little bit uh, to carry a big tank, uh, and we need to definitely add some retrofitter, uh, you know, nozzles and spray components. But um, yes, that's something we can do, uh, and it's definitely one of the thing on top of my head uh, after inventory. This might be a next cool application. Right. So Tenzil, I know when we went and rode nurseries last year, one of the things that we had talked about was the bed widths at different at the nurseries vary. So yeah. I was trying to look at that picture and see if I could tell, but did you get it set up where it can expand and contract to fit different bed sizes and different heights of plants? Uh, let me actually share that with you so that it's probably better for me to explain. And we'll let you go after this, Tanzil. I know you got to make your, you got a class at 1030. So. Sure. So, so this is the track width is adjustable. Uh, you know, we have this cross. You can see my screen. Is that correct? No. No. How about now? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay. So this actually, uh, if you see on the picture on the right, there, there are actually three crossbars, um, which you can actually kind of a slide your wheels in and out. Uh, so it can kind of have a variable track where it's to adjust to different nursery beds. Uh, the maximum is, is seven feet. That is uh, something uh, restricted. Uh, seven feet is 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 the bed uh, is is the track width, and the track width is is the distance between two wheels. So that is 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 something taken care of. Uh, the height is not, so we are adding few more sports uh, to to take care of the height. But we also have some of the height mechanism at the moment. Uh, I. This is actually a three bar linkage, something similar to you have uh, on tractors. Uh, so you can adjust some height component, but the height control is very limited at the moment. That's but you, the, these are actually few crossbars. You can open up these boards and slide the wheels in and out to be adjustable to the width of your bed. 
Very cool. Yeah, it looks like you got some wiggle room. Does that answer your question? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did, did I answer your question, Russell? Yes. So, so it does have the variability. I mean, is that something that y'all are looking to over time as you develop it, make it where it can go wider? Jeremy, you may can speak to what the beds are like down there. I mean, is seven an average width or more of them, eight, ten? I'd say, yeah, the wider? average width is, is probably six. There's some eight foot folks, but uh, I don't, I think that it would probably. Work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so eventually probably down the road, uh, this is, so with the six feet, this 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 also will cover, the, the maximum width is seven feet. So I think that should be covered. Uh, for the folks with the eight width or probably 10 width uh, bed spacing, uh, we probably need to have bigger uh, crossbars, but we also need to figure out the dynamics uh, to move this, uh, take turns and stuff like that. So that will be some, some work to do. Uh, but yeah, I think that is, um, that is something we can can address. Uh, well, Tanzel, this was great. It's very interesting, and thank you for your time today. And we'll let you get to class. So thank thank you very again. much.